Hello, friends, and welcome to Shauna Stitches. I'm Shauna, and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been working on lately. Today is Sunday, September 18th, 2022, and this is episode number 57. Thank you to new and returning viewers. I appreciate all the likes, subscribes, and comments that you leave me. Uh, I do reply to each and every one, so thank you again. Uh, today's episode is a little bit of a different one. I mentioned in the last, last episode that I was going to show you my Stephen West mystery knit along yarn as soon as it came. And that's here today. So, uh, not only is my yarn here, but my mom's yarn is here. I have an alternate and I thought it would be really fun to take a look back at the other mystery knit along shawls I've done for Stephen West. So uh, before I get into that really quickly, I am wearing the Summer Sorrel, which is kind of hard to see under my overalls, but uh, I do love this. This might be my favorite summer top knit, other than the ranunculus, because I, I really have worn that, but this one's nice. But I'm not going to get into that too much today. Okay, I did make myself some show notes, um, which aren't too detailed, but they do go into the yarns. The very first year that I joined the Mystery Knit Along was 2018, and that was the year of Texture Time. And it's it's so big, I'm probably gonna have to stand up for each and every one of these. <clears throat> That's Texture Time in its glory. It's a beautiful shawl, it's humongous. In fact, uh, I did take note of how many yards each of the shawls have been so far for me. I knit this on a 3.75 millimeter, which is a US 5. I believe the pattern calls for a 3.5 millimeter, but every single year since the first year, I have always gone up a needle size and it has worked out well for me. This shawl had the syncopated brioche which it was not my first time doing brioche, but it was the first time doing syncopated. It has mohair. Um, what else? Did this one have the braids? Yep, it has a, is it called a Latvian cable or a Latvian braid or something like that? That was, uh, that's what you see all between these stripes. That was quite an interesting te technique. <clears throat> um, here you see we had some of the bubble stitch. I think this might have been the first time he used bubble stitch. I don't know. This this shawl right here got me hooked on the mystery knit alongs. I learned so much and it was just so fun to knit along with everyone. And I personally cannot see myself not participating ever. I mean... I guess never say never, right? But it's ginormous, squishy. Uh, I love the mohair. I'm trying to remember, it might have been the first time I had ever uh, knit with mohair. That being said, all of this yarn was from my stash except for the mohair, which is Blue Moon Fiber Arts Silk Mo in the color Psycho Barbie. That's the bright, bright pink. I love the Yarn name, uh, I, I love everything about this. Um, the other yarns that I used were a Long Dog Yarns in Dark Dimension. Uh, that's gonna be this gray with the pops. I used two Stitch and Octopus colors. One was an unknown colorway, and the other one says it's called Mermaid Slumber Party. And honestly, I don't, I don't know which one that is. <laughs> I've lost track. Um, actually, I think it's this one. What did he call these? Kitty paws, puppy paws, something like that. The little holes. I think that's uh, Mermaid Slumber Party and possibly it might be striped with the other one. It's been so long since I knit this. Obviously, 2018, that's been quite a while. Um, and then the last color was by the Creative Obsession, uh, who is no longer dying. And that was this tealy green color, and that's called Surf's Up. So yes, uh, that was my very first mystery shawl, and a lot of fun to knit. 
Then 2019, we had Starflake. Starflake was quite different because it only used two colors. I'll stand up again and show you this one. Again, it's a huge shawl. Did I tell you on that last one, I said I wrote down yardage, but I'm not sure if I told you. Uh, texture time was 2,109 yards. The star flake, I used 1,436 yards. One thing I've noticed is that there, there always is quite a lot of yarn left over. As I said, this only used two colors, and these were custom dyed just for me, which makes a girl feel real special. Uh, these were dyed by Bean and Bam hand dyed. Uh, also Shauna, hello if you're watching. Um, she doesn't dye anymore, but she did at the time and she offered to do some custom colors because I wasn't finding what I was looking for. And she said, what two colors do you like? And I said teal and coral and that's what she came up with. Just beautiful. And I'm trying to remember but I do believe I made either I chose the large border option or I made my own large border, but I, I'm pretty sure it was an option in the pattern because I don't think I was really up for, I'm still not really up for modifying things, but uh, I don't think I modified that. Let me try it on. Um, what's interesting is this is a whole almost 600 yards more than texture time and yet it still feels like a significant size shawl. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have too much else to say about this one. Um, it did have some new techniques. Again, more brioche which if you've never done a uh, West Knits Mystery Knit Along and you're scared of brioche, don't worry. A, Steven does really great videos to describe everything. And B, he always has an alternate option. But I would encourage you to try brioche if you've never done it. It's not as hard as one might think. I will admit the hardest part is if you mess up and you want to fix it or you need to fix it. Fixing it can be a little challenging, but there are some great video tutorials on how to do that. I don't know if I have any mistakes in mine. I might. Um, <clears throat> but once you get the rhythm of brioche, it's really not hard. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that one. Then 2020, we had Slip Stravaganza. And this one, again, I used the 3.75 millimeter, which is a US 5. And... I used 1,959 yards of Holstgarn Super Soft. Again, ginormous. Now this one, this one I know I did. No, I still didn't um, modify it, I don't think. But I did go with a huge border because I really like to use up as much yarn as I can. That being said, even after creating the biggest size, I still knit at least two hats out of what I had left over. And they were like marled hats, so more than one strand. This uh, project, again, had some really interesting techniques. Uh, I think these are called the brick shape, which he has used in a lot of other shawls since. And, or maybe these are the bricks. I'm not sure. Either way, uh, as the name implies, it's slip extravaganza, and <clears throat> there was a lot of slipping stitches, which is not a hard technique at all. So there is that shawl. I'm obviously not styling these very prettily, but you can see um, that they are quite large shawls. Um, this was, I said, um, Holskarn Super Soft, and I used the colors Nugget, which is the grayish sort of color, uh, Sugar Snap, Geranium, and Peony. And I couldn't tell you now which color is which, but 
there you see all four colors. Um, yeah, I do, uh, the whole card is super soft. I remember this was actually a kit that Steven had on his site. And I just went to Holzgarn and got it myself. I think it cost half the price of getting it from Amsterdam, even though it came from Denmark. And the yarn, um, I guess, you know, some people will say rustic or whatever. It's rustic, as in it's not like buttery soft. But once it's washed and blocked, it's really nice. It's very warm. Seeing all these just makes me think I really should actually wear my hand knits because I'm terrible about wearing them. All right, that leads us to 2021 and shawlography, which if you have watched recently, I have shown you, but I will show it again in case you haven't seen it. Here is shawlography. And I literally just finished this. Um... Yes, I showed it as a finished object last podcast, in fact. So I mentioned before that these were all from Stash, again, um, pat myself on the back. <laughs> these were all Knit Crate yarns uh, from a Knit Crate subscription. The brown is Audine Wools, and it's called, or the color is called More Coffee, M-O-A-R Coffee. The... I have to remember which is which here. I believe it's this lighter color, sort of purpley blue, is Knitology in Gibbous Moon. And then there are two, Uru, Uru, it's U-R-U, -U. I don't know how you say that, Uru Yarns in Hidden Pool and Lumen. I believe Hidden Pool is the darker purple that you see, and Lumen is the green color that you see striped with the brown. And the last color was called Pure Bliss by Vitalana, and that is the beautiful yellow. What you may or may not be able to see is that three of the yarns in here have sparkle, and that would be the yellow. This is so hard to show. <laughs> the yellow, I don't think you're seeing any of the sparkle. Uh, the green and the variegated purple. So I'm all I'm all tangled here. Let's start over. I will not be teaching uh, shawl wearing 101. Definitely not my. <laughs> All right, there you go. Um, yes, another huge schlinket. Uh, if I didn't mention this one, use 1,463 yards. Tons of yarn left over when you're dealing with five colors. So <clears throat> this year, uh, we have twists and turns. And. If I'm being honest, I'm just hoping it's going to be ginormous. Um, quite frankly, if it's even bigger than the biggest one, which was texture time, I'd be okay with that. Um, yes, I just want to knit on it as much as I can and use as much yarn as I can. So that being said, we uh, the pattern calls for the equivalent of five skeins or um, 500 grams, which is a lot of yarn. I have everything I need to get started in this beautiful project bag. It's actually the same bag that I used for last year's Mystery Cal. And uh, I cannot remember the maker's name. She's on Etsy. I don't think there's a tag on here. But uh, I have checked her shop recently and it's been on vacation. So I don't know if she's going to make bags anymore. So I may or may not link that below if I remember. All right, my colors this year. I went with Knit Picks palette. I have this taupey tan color, which is called Almond. There is a corally color called Conch. 
And who would I even be without a bright, bright pink? <laughs> this one is called Cosmopolitan. So that being said, these are my colors. I plan on this being the main color, the coral being the contrast, and of course the pink will be the pop. I got slightly concerned when I took my skeins of yarn, took a picture, and then adjusted them to black and white because when I looked on the nitpick site, um, and I know they say that colors may vary based on the screen or the device you're using, your lighting settings, all those things. Um, but I compared the contrast and there was really good contrast. So then I took a picture of my yarn in natural daylight and I turned it to black and white. And yes, the pink contrast, but the tan and the coral do not. Um, in fact, truth be told, that almond color, the tan, when I saw it on the website, it was more like a slightly tinted cream color. I was not expecting tan. Tan is not really a color I'm drawn to, tan or brown. And that being said, I just used that nice dark brown in my um, shawlography, which I love. So maybe I need to branch out. But generally, the neutral that I am comfortable with is either white or undyed yarn and um, gray. Those are my two. I don't really go for browns. I'm not sure why, but I mean, I, I really do like it in the swatch, even though there's not a ton of contrast. I love that coral. I mean, honestly, the coral pops as well as the, the bright pink. So that's going to be fun. Uh, if I had to take any guesses on what twists and turns means, I, I don't know. I mean, cables, because we are using a cable needle. And I was just working on my jigsaw puzzle blanket and I was thinking, I wonder if twists and turns could be like twisting and turning the project itself to, you know, do modular knitting. That's a possibility. Could be modular cables. I also had an idea it would be kind of cool if it's like braided cables as in like you do a cable strip, a cable strip, a cable strip, and then braid them somehow. But uh, I mean, obviously I don't know. I just thought it'd be kind of cool. And uh, what else? That's all I can say. I have never actually knit with Knit Picks palette yarn, but it's it's nice. I mean, I didn't block this, but for the price point, it's soft. And for not being super wash, um, I like it. I would definitely use this for color work in the future, I think. The one concern I do have is that Knit Picks Palette is a two-ply yarn. Let's see. I don't know. Hopefully you're seeing that. Take my word for it. Knit Picks <laughs> I can't talk. Knit Picks Palette is a two-ply yarn. And when it comes to lace, two-ply is supposed to be fantastic. When it comes to cables, three-ply or more, creating a rounder yarn, is supposed to make the cables pop more. So I'm slightly apprehensive about that yarn only for that. Um, I mean, I was apprehensive about the colors, but I think that's going to be good. Let me um, just step right over there where I threw uh, slip extravaganza because these colors are going to be kind of similar. Where did, there it is. And actually, that being said, it's probably a really good thing that the tan color came darker than I was expecting because otherwise I think this would be, I mean, it's still going to be similar, but it would be probably a lot more similar. So um, the other thing, that was based off of a kit on Stephen West's site called Flora Sansa or Sansa Flora, something like that. Um, if I remember, I will put a picture in of what that looks like. And that was what I was basing my colors off of. Um, I think that was La, La Bien Ami. Ami, Ami, anyway. Um, I did also get a second option just in case for whatever reason, those other colors don't work out. And that is these three. 
This is Nitpick Stroll. Uh, the good thing about Stroll is that this would be a three ply. I'm pretty sure it's either a three ply or a four ply, but it's a sock weight yarn. And this would probably be better for the cables. So this one is cobblestone heather, dove heather, and pucker. Again, bright pink. Um, so I do have a backup plan. Um, yeah. I'm going to go with, with the palette first because that was the colors that I liked. And, I mean, I do like the other ones, obviously. But you can see that's my safe zone. <laughs> How bright pink is a safe zone is beyond me, but <laughs> it is. Um, and then I mentioned previously that I talked to my mom into doing this mystery shawl with me. So she really doesn't have a lot of knitting stuff. So I got her this Bags by Awesome Granny bag with knitting kitties on it. Uh, my mom is cat obsessed. She doesn't currently have a cat, but she would like one. So I got her stitch markers, needles, uh, cable needles, all the good things. Um, this I got off of Amazon. It had the circular stitch markers, but then I've put some of the, um, we call them like safety pin kind of uh, light bulb. <laughs> I had a light bulb, light bulb stitch markers, and uh, then a couple of the ones that I have made in the past where I just connect one of these cute sparkly baubles to a light bulb stitch marker. So that's ready to go. She's got a needle in there. And then for her colors, uh, we have Nitpick Stroll. These are the three colors. Aren't those beautiful? Um, <clears throat> so I'm quite happy with these. I hope she will be. I will insert a photo of the inspiration kit from Stephen West's site on how I picked these colors. She gave me two that she liked. Uh, I made some sample sort of kits based on what I could find on nitpicks and sent them to her. And this is the one she picked. I did think that the cork, which is this color, I thought that was going to be slightly lighter. There's still plenty of contrast. So I think it's going to be okay. And hopefully she likes it. But um, we have cork. We have grizzly heather, which is very close to that dark brown color that I knit on my shawlography. I'm going to have to remember this color because I like it a lot. And then the green, which is going to be her pop, is the bamboo heather. It's just so pretty. For not being a green person, I love this green. So, yeah, I think that is going to be, that's going to be beautiful, whatever it turns out to be. So, um, as I mentioned before, I am very jealous of my mom's colors. So, I might just let her pick my colors next time because... It's good to step outside of our comfort zones. You know, I've got uh, the pinks. The pinks seem to be sort of where I gravitate towards. And then, you know, the coral. I love teal. Uh, there was definitely a theme, except for the um, the one out of the Knit Crate yarns. That one was very outside of my comfort zone. But the others definitely are within my theme. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, there's a lot of people who are going to be joining in. Are you joining in? Do you have any questions that I could answer maybe? Um, if you do, ask. I'd love to, I don't know, help you pick colors or, I don't know. <laughs> I'd love to, to uh, chat about the MCAL, quite honestly. I'm getting excited. Uh, the fact that Steven announces this like a month before it comes out is uh, aggravating. I mean, it's good. It builds up that anticipation, but um, I suppose mostly it's to let everyone have time to get the yarn. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all I have to say about the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. Once October rolls around, this is going to be spoiler central. Uh, if you watch the podcast, I will definitely put up spoiler alerts, but um, it's probably about all I'm going to have progress to show on. So, I hope you're having a wonderful September day. I will talk to you all soon. Bye. How many shawls is too many shawls? <laughs>